Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video. And uh, don't mind it. Don't mind if you're paying attention. We're wearing the same shirt as last night. We're in Vegas. We're doing Vegas things. It's fine. It's fine. I don't smell. Anyways, uh, I think we're actually going to play the win again today. Uh, I'm walking right now because it turns out the win and the Encore Poker Room is super close to my Airbnb. And considering I don't have a car here, Ubers are super expensive. So you might see a lot of vlogs uh, from the Encore and win. But also, Resorts World right behind me. Also really cool. Uh, I might play there as well since it's relatively close. But let me know in the comments below where you guys want me to play. Um, you might see a lot of wind stuff. But I'm trying to mix it up. Um, some Aria, Bellagio. I, I never run well at Bellagio. Uh, but <laughs> Caesars and obviously the Golden Nugget. We got to come back and redeem ourselves there. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comment below what casinos you want me to play. And what casinos you want me to film at here. But um, yeah, today we're going to be at the win. I think we're going to play 2-5 or 5-10 whichever one we get called to first. And one of these times, I'll hop into a 2050. Maybe, maybe. But for right now, let's not get too crazy. Let's get into the action, let's get into the hands. We get called for the 510 game at the win, so we buy in for a whopping $5,000, and we're hopping into it with a 510 $20 mandatory straddle. Let's strap in. One of the first hands, we're on the under the gun mandatory straddle, and we pick up five four of diamonds. Folds around to the big blind player on my right who limps in for 20. Suited connectors in position. I'm gonna raise it up to 60 here and he makes the call for $40 more. Going to a flop of eight, three deuce to hearts. He checks to us and with five high, open and a straight draw and a dream. We put out a C bet of $50 here with five high. He makes the call for 50. The turn now is the five of spades. So all things considered, not a bad card. He checks to us and with second pair here, uh, we've turned some showdown. We decide to check back for pot control. The river is now another deuce. Doesn't really change the board too much and for a third time he checks. I think I'm just going to check this one back. Don't think we can get called by worse if we were to bet for value. And when we check, he shows us ace high with the ace 10 off suits. Pair of fives, gonna take this one down first hand in. In the next spot, we pick up ace king in the small blind and there's a plus one player who limps. Folds to me, we're out of position. I wanna raise it up on a little bit larger side here, so I size to 100. This plus one player who limped makes the call. Going to a flop of seven, five, eight, two hearts. Pretty much a horrible board for us, so out of position, I check, he checks it back. The turn comes a pretty good looking ace of spades, so now we have top pair, top kicker. Now definitely gonna put out a bet for value and I size to 150. For this price, 150, he makes the call and we're off to evaluate a river. The river is a nine, not amazing. Any six makes a straight four liner out there. And here we have a decision to either check with the intentions of calling or folding a bet, or we can just put out a really small block bet of $130, which is what I elected to do. Sometimes we can get called by worse aces and worse one pairs. But in this instance, he thinks for a while, ends up putting in a raise to $400. Feeling pretty gross about this hand, unfortunately, with top pair, top kicker. Facing this raise, I think we're just gonna have to let this one go and move on. All right, so this third hand here, it goes off the rails. We pick up queen jack of hearts on the button. There's a 510 20 on, but I didn't realize that there was a $40 straddle on as well. I just thought this player put in a raise to $50, so I accidentally limp $40. I thought I was calling a $50 raise, but Accidentally, what really happened is that I open limped $40. Seems pretty stupid. Anyways, action folds to the only one player who put on the $20 straddle. He calls for $20 more. And now the double straddler puts in a re-raise to $140 on top of the $40 straddle. So it's $180 to go. And here we're just not going to be folding. Uh, limped in in a really weird time. Just really confused this hand. I make the call for 140. Under the gun player folds. Going to a flop heads up of king 4-4, four, four, two hearts. This plus one player actually checks. Really surprised by that. I really didn't expect this. And with our flush draw, we're in position, queen high. We're gonna check this one back and see a turn. The turn is the queen diamonds. And now we have a pair to go along with our flush draw. He checks again. And I decided to throw out a bet. In hindsight, a check just makes the most sense with second pair and no kicker. But I throw out a bet and it's a sizable one of $220, a little too large in hindsight. But the 220 to go, it's not large enough for our opponent. He puts in a check raise to $700. Facing a double check raise seems really strong and really rare, 
but obviously we just can't fold yet. We're not feeling great about this hand, but got to make the call for about 500 more. Let's improve on the river. The river is the nine of spades. So there's some hands that he could have been bluffing with or semi-bluffing with, like jack 10 that gets there, but having a jack in our hand blocks some of that. Doesn't matter though, he elects on another bet and a sizable one to 1450. What a start to the session. We started off with 5K in stack and now facing this really large bet, I think we have all three decisions available to us. We can easily fold with second pair and no kicker, calling sometimes to bluff catch against chops or I don't even know what else is bluffing here in this spot for that amount. But the third option I actually really like ripping it all in as a bluff because we have a jack in hand and we block some jack tens. We can rep jack tens as I think jack 10 can play this way as well, but ultimately as played, I decided to make the call and well, he shows us king jack off suit. Pretty tough session. We are down about $2,800 to start. It's only 15 minutes into the session and we've got to crawl back somehow. So down a boatload, we add on for $3,000 more in the game for total of 8K now, we've got to crawl back. In the next spot, we have Queen 10 of Diamonds and we're under the gun on that straddle. There's an early position player who limps, a hijack raised to $70. The big one makes the call and now onto me, we're out of position. I don't like just flat calling, but for only $50 more and the hijack player isn't too deep, I decided to make the call, not really put in the three bet squeeze here when the player doesn't have a lot behind. Anyways, the early position limper comes along as well. So we're going multi-way to a flop of 10, five, six, two spades. 10 high flops seem pretty good for our hand, but when action checks to me, I check it and action checks around. The turn now is a seven board, a little bit more connected. Eight, nine makes there for the straight, but the big line actually bets out $100 in the situation. With top pair, okay kicker, um, we're just gonna defend and call here. The hijack comes along and makes the call as well. So we're still going three ways to a river. The river is the seven of spades. So the front door spade draw gets there, but surprisingly action actually checks around. I just don't want to be betting in this spot with just a marginal top pair. I feel pretty good about my hand as both players are reluctant to show when it checks on this river and we take this down. So find a way to win this one. We couldn't lose all of them, right? Another orbit or two goes by. We're back in the on the gun straddle and we pick up king 10 off suit. It's a four way limped pot, $20 each. So we're going four ways to a flop. Flop comes queen 10, 10 rainbow. Great flop for us with trips. The big blind throws out a bet of $20 and with a 10 and good kicker. I'm going to slow play this one in position and with multiple players around, I make the call and the small blind makes the call. The turn comes the four of diamonds. It's essentially a total brick. And once again, the big blind throws out a bet of $140. Given the sizing and him sizing way up here, almost the size of the pot, I'm going to continue to slow play. We're in position. Let's just make the call for now. Small blind folds. We're going heads up to a river. The river is the seven of spades, another brick city card for us. And surprisingly now he checks. Welp, I'm going to size up big here. Maybe it's look like a bluff. Maybe get max value against some sort of queen holding that doesn't believe me. So I size to 750. He snap folds, unfortunately there. So no value for us. It doesn't seem like we would have gotten anything if we bet a little bit smaller anyways. Slowly crawling back though from these small pots. On the way of trying to crawling back, we pick up queen jack of clubs on the button. There's an early position player who raises to $50. We're in position with a very playable hand. I decided to call this one. That brings along the small blind and big blind as well to call. So once again, multi-way to a flop of ace, eight, nine, two clubs. Action checks to me, and you'd think I'd probably bet this one with such a strong draw. Got the combo draw, flush draw, and inside straight draw, but I decided to check this one back. Couldn't tell you what I was thinking here, to be honest. Anyways, the turn is the six of spades, so um, not the card that we're looking to see, but an early position player bets out $120. A raise here now wouldn't make too much sense given the check back on the flop, so I decided to just make the call for 120. And the big blind comes along as well for a call. We're going three ways to a river now. The river is an eight. And surprisingly now, action checks to me. We've got queen high and once again, a dream. Queen high can't take this down unless we bluff at this. So let's take a shot. I throw out a bet of $440. 
next to act in the big blind, thinks about it, and doesn't take too long before making the call. Well, we obviously know that this bluff didn't work. Now onto the early position player who lets his cards go and folds. I show my queen high, missed combo draw. This player shows pocket kings somehow. We're just getting owned this session in the bigger pots. Don't know what's wrong with me. Don't know if I have a tell, but things aren't going great. Following hand with four or five of diamonds in the cutoff, there's a plus one open to $40. Hijack makes the call, and if we're playing normal one, three, or two, five, I could consider three betting this one here, but considering our stack's been dwindling and you know we're playing pretty big, I make the call, button makes the call as well. So once again, multi-way to a flop. Flop comes ace, king, eight, two diamonds. And surprisingly, action checks to me. I can go either way with the check or bet, but considering how this session's going right now, checking is boring. We throw out a bet of $120 with our five high flush draw. Only the button makes the call and comes along, so we're going heads up out of position. The turn is the six of spades. Once again, picking up the combo draw as well as our flush draw. So definitely a good time to barrel. We've got five high in a dream, like I said. We throw out a sizable bet this time to 370. He thinks about it for quite some time, ultimately makes the call. So we're off to a river. Let's try to bank something one time, please. The river is the four of clubs. So, you know, we hit something. It's just bottom pair, not what we wanted to see. With bottom pair, I don't think we can just continue barreling relentlessly now. Time to just give up and hopefully get the showdown. I check, he throws out a bet of $550. I don't think we're gonna call this one with a pair of fours. I let this one go and fold. And immediately this player asks to rack up after losing every single pot to him. The very next deal, picking up pocket kings in the hijack, finally, let's make some money this time. Action folds to me, I put in an open raise to $70. $70, too much here. Everyone folds, sick game, sick game. It's all right though, we pick up another premium, ace king offsuit and plus one. I'm gonna raise it up to $60 since it seems like no one wanted to call 70. Only the small blind makes the call for 60, and we're off to a flop. Flop comes 8-3, deuce, two hearts. He checks to me, and with ace, king, high, not a lot going on for us. I'm going to check this one back with some backdoor heart possibilities. The turn is a good looking one in the five of hearts, so we do pick up that backdoor heart possibility along with our gutter ball, and he throws out a bet of $100 now. So considering that we do have a good flush draw, the gutter, and two overs to the board, I think it's a good candidate to put in a raise here. We're in position, try to apply some pressure on weaker holdings. So I raise it up to 300. He checks his cards. Seems like he was doing some sort of a heart check here and he ends up making the call. The river is now the seven of spades. It's just not one of those cards that's good for us. None of these runouts are good for us actually. He checks to me and on a board and river that just smashes him more than me at this point, I give up and check it back with ace king high. He shows the infamous pocket fours. Clearly this hand can't lose, but I just can't win a pot either. For the last interesting hand of note, we pick up five, six of spades and plus one. These pseudo connectors haven't treated us well so far, but time to turn it around. I raise it up to $60, action folds around to the player to my right and under the gun. He makes the call for 40 more on the straddle. The flop comes ace, 10, eight, two spades. He checks to me and once again, we have a flush draw. We have to hit it this time, right? I put in a C bet of $70 and now he, he does something uncomfortable. He check raises to a large sizing to $300. Considering how the session's been going so far, we've missed every single draw. This could definitely be a fold given the situation. Six high flush draw, naked flush draw, um, definitely one of the worst hands we can have in this situation, but obviously we're probably not playing our A game at this point. I make the call for 230 more. One time, let's see a spade. The turn is the six of hearts. Just one of those cards that it's really annoying because we have a pair with our flush draw now. And even worse, he puts in a pretty large over bet to $900. <sighs> As played now, like obviously we could have folded on the flop. We also can fold here, but pair and flush draw. If I make the call here, I have about $2,500 behind and I'm just praying for maybe another six or maybe even a five. I don't even know if two pair here would be ever be good. If we hit a spade, we don't really know if it's good here either, but we're committing our hand if we hit anything. 
I make the call for $900 more. This hand's also off the rails. Let's bank a river one time. The river is the king of clubs. Brick city for us. The thing is with this river though, it's actually not a bad one. We can actually bluff shove on some runouts and considering the king does hit me more as I opened a preflop, this could work out. But we don't get that opportunity. He puts in a very simple bet. It's a 5k chip. The win 5k chips are also really pretty. And that's pretty much putting my entire stack all in of only a measly 2,500. Well, can we find a hero call here with bottom pair? Specifically, we pretty much just specifically beat Jack nine of spades. And well, the worst case scenario is that queen jack of spades that was also semi bluffing would have also gotten there with the straight. All sets and everything still beats us here. And well, jamming when we have all the ace kings definitely feels like value now. So we've torched a lot of money. What's another $2,500? We think about it and flick in, just, just kidding. No, we, we don't call. We, we flick in our cards, let it go and rack up. This was not our day. So, you know, although we got torched in the game, a free Miley Cyrus concert always just helps alleviate the pain and makes up for everything. Yeah, today we didn't win a single hand. I don't, I don't really know what hands we won besides like the trip tens. We had a bunch of draws, didn't get there. I don't know. Um, this one didn't go our way, uh, to say the least. We played for a few hours, in the game for 8K, out of the game for 24.85. Yeah, in for 8K, out for 24.84. Not a good number. Well, significantly lower than what we bought in for. Uh, so there's that. Anyways, hopefully we'll rebound soon. If we don't rebound soon, then I don't know what to say. This could just be a bloody downhill battle, but uh, you know, we'll go from there. I don't know what to say anymore, but Miley Cyrus will help alleviate a lot of the pain. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video somehow. Pity likes, pity subscribes. Those, those are always welcome, but if you made it this far, all I have to say is uh, sometime we'll bounce back. Not, not right now, not today, not this video, but sometime. We'll see.